How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sundays, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Tuesday here on the show. You know what that means? We've got a lot to talk about. Raw last night. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about from Raw last night. Do we ever. And the next big show, and I will call it a big show, is this coming Thursday when they do the press event for WrestleMania. So be ready for news that day. Because a lot's going down. It was made abundantly clear watching the Raw show last night. But we will talk about all of that when we get back from the break. I do want to open today wishing all the best to the friends and family of Toby Keith. DNA Wrestling announced today, deeply saddened by his death, passed away at 62 years old following a battle with stomach cancer. Statement released on his website said he passed peacefully while surrounded by his family. Well known for his music, Keith, Keith was also a pro wrestling fan. Friendship with Jeff Jarrett led to performing at the first ever TNA wrestling event in 2022. Took part in angles on the first two NWA TNA shows. Later, Keith and Jarrett considering, uh, considered buying TNA or starting a new wrestling promotion together. Idea was never able to come to fruition. TNA said deeply saddened to learn of the passing of country music legend Toby Keith, who appeared on the very first TNA event. We offer our condolences to the friends and family. So very sad news there. And, uh, yeah, we reviewed those uh, those early NWA TNA shows. I could say that he was a highlight if you watch the rest of those shows, undoubtedly. And uh, he did a good job. Passionate guy. So uh, we we'll talk more about that later on here today. We've also got notes on Brock Lesnar, Cody Rhodes, Roman. You know what we're going to talk about today. We don't need to ask Cody. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Um, well, I was super excited. Like, um, you know, when I, when I joined the AW and it was the Blackpool Combat Club, I was like, oh, yeah, it just, like, people ask me, how do you feel? I'm like, I feel like it's just right. Like, it just, yeah, yeah. I, just, I get up another day and it's like I've always been part of it, you know? And and, and uh, with Brian, again, like, I've known him for almost 20 plus years now, uh, all over the world. Like you said, we've been in the ring um, all over the world and, like, just also just hung out and traveled together for so long. Um, that it's been so much fun, um, you know, just being around him a lot. And, uh, you know, I always mention the, the BCC group chat because it seems to get people jealous that they're not, <laughs> that they're not in it. Um, uh, there's also a, a, a BCC book club, I think, that just got founded. So, yeah. Um, Wait, did that just start? I mean, we just we just started our first book that we were all reading together. So, yeah, I think that's going to be a thing as, as well. Because I know Brian said that he reads three books at the same time. So is he making you guys do this or was this uh, like a joint thing? No. So I feel like uh, so. So Brian has been reading for, for a long time and he reads a lot of books. Uh, I think he reads like at least one a week or something like that, which is incredible. Um, I just started reading a lot more this year and i know uh, marks reads quite a bit as well so we were just kind of like oh what if we just kind of do a book club thing we just all read like a similar like the same book and they talk about it and we were like oh, sure yeah why not so uh we're forcing yuda to read as well um no <laughs> i mean like yuda was always reading but you know we're just um, now doing this kind of thing so so it, it that just kind of sums it up how much fun it is it's been with with brian and then uh, to to your second part of the of the question um you know if 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 this is his last uh, year full-time wrestling i'm extremely happy to have had that match with him um because we were kind of talking it was like the last couple of matches we had were in front of uh, nobody or screens in the thunderdome era and then before that it was like tag matches and this and that but like singles wise i think it was like a gauntlet match years ago like that's not 14 or 15 or something like that when i was still with um zeb and swagger and then obviously you know before that ring of honor so it, it's been actually been quite a while and um i mean i was extremely happy that i was able to wrestle him for that long in front of an audience on tv and uh, just go in there and have fun and uh you know like if he can do it again like uh, i would obviously love to but if not i feel like you know if 
Brian's kind of going, you know, if this is his last year, he's just going down the list of fun stuff that he wants to do. And I was glad to have been part of it. Not so glad about that draw since he cost me the, the tournament, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Next up for Vivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And it is amazing how things change in just a couple of days. Man, oh man. Know what I'm saying, Mike? No, Brian, actually, I don't know what you're saying. Oh, interesting. What, what do you mean by all of this here? Well, I watched Raw last night, as we all did. Yes. And I think it's very, very clear what is going on. And that is that this coming Thursday at this press event, I believe that Cody is finding his way into a match with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I, I tend to believe that uh, too, sir. But I would say this. I don't know if that's been a change or not. Well, here's the thing. Many things going on here. So first off, all right. First off, and this is obviously 100% an angle, and it has been since, at the very least, okay, at the very least, Sunday, and probably much, much further back than that, okay? Like December. For sure, it was an angle on Sunday because they were already planting those Cody signs, okay? And then if you watched the show last night, I mean, you've got the announcers plugging this Cody hashtag and what happened on the show, if you missed it, was that Seth Rollins came out and every mention of wanting to wrestle Cody, Cody fighting for Seth's title, Roman Reigns, The Rock, they all got booed. And, I mean, it wasn't even like, they're not even trying to hide it. They know that you want Cody to finish his story. And that was literally what the entire show was built around. So, you know, we were talking yesterday, did they do this to, uh, you know, take attention away from, from the Vince thing? And, you know, as Dave noted yesterday, the answer is absolutely not, because they booked the, uh, what's the building in Vegas? Um, T-Mobile? T-Mobile. They booked T-Mobile a long time ago with the idea that Rock was going to be there and they were going to do this angle, okay? So... What are we going to do Thursday? Well, I mean, there's really there's really two options. One option is Cody is now in a three-way. The other option is, God forbid, Roman needs to wrestle two nights, which was the suggestion that I had a long time ago. Now, how could you do this? I don't know. Honestly, it doesn't matter. At this point, as long as you do it, the fans are going to be happy. But... You, you could do a storyline where essentially they uh, have a Rock and Roman out there, they sign their contract, and then Cody's music hits, and Cody comes out and he says, you know, I wanted to make sure that you signed that match with The Rock before I let you know that I did win the Royal Rumble, and contractually, I do get to pick my opponent for WrestleMania, and you guys can do whatever you want on Saturday night, but I'm picking you for Sunday. And then you've got The Rock and Roman Reigns on Saturday. You've got Roman Reigns and Cody on Sunday. And away we go. I mean, they're pushing this way, way too hard for that not to be, whether it's whatever. I mean, Cody's Cody's fighting for the title at WrestleMania one way or the other. I think that's, I don't know. What do you want to say? 95%? I'd say so. After Raw last night, it felt like 100%, but you, you do never know. Mm. But I, I think that that is where we are, are going there. 
And uh, Cody, I mean, they did a thing after Raw went off the air, which is now all over the internet, WWE. You know, they're promoting it everywhere, where he came out, Cody, to address the We Want Cody and Rocky Sucks chants, which went on after the show went off the air. And Cody came out and said those three words. All I can say is this, since I was a little boy who grew up loving everything, for you to want me is special because I've always wanted you. And they took this thing and they put it all over social media. I mean, it's what's happening. This is what's happening. But how they get there and what the actual decision is, we're going to find out on Thursday. I'm not saying that I agree or disagree with any of this, but I could see in their mind, okay, for the hardcore wrestling fan that sits out there and watches us, how are we going to make Cody winning it or going to WrestleMania? How do we put a little bit of a twist in that? Sure, he's going to win the Royal Rumble, but okay, how do we put a little bit of a twist in that? And looking at it from a Endeavor point of view, looking at it from a company corporate point of view, Cody Rhodes going over and standing uh, tall over Roman Reigns at WrestleMania would be a pretty big moment. ESPN would love that sort of thing, all that sort of stuff. But what if The Rock was involved in that too? And maybe they have been playing 4D chess the entire time and built all of this in. It was CM Punk that pointed out to Cody Rhodes, reminded him this is what a CM Punk WrestleMania story is like. So they have actually done what they've done here now do i think that that has been the best way to go about things do i think that they needed to insert the rock in this no i don't no no i don't because i i again i think if you're going to end up with a three-way then that people are still going to want to see rock and roman and, and deal with family business after this and are we going to get rock for for two matches and if that's the case are you still just then not overshadowing everything else that you have going on i think they've gotten to this and again not the the way i would have done it but then again they've gone with this whole story for the past two years they've done some things that i would not have done myself but then then again it's paid off for them and i'm sitting here talking to you brian so i don't know but what i do know is they are getting the attention that they want out of this and even though it's not direct it's completely indirect but yeah it does take some of the attention away from Vince. We've seen this as hardcore wrestling fans online. We've seen it where people were, were talking a lot more about justice for Cody and justice for Roman than they were justice for the rock than they were with the lawsuit. So again, there's a lot of multiple things at play here, but they are obviously trying to put their best PR foot forward with everything, which makes it really interesting to see how things are going to turn out in Vegas on Thursday. Although it's a pay and play event. The amount of money I saw that it took to actually have to go to that event and have like, you know, drinks with Triple H or the picture or whatever, that stuff, that's insane to me. That is absolutely mind-blowingly insane that somebody would spend 2500 or 5000 bucks to go to a, a pre-show presser gala gimmick deal. It really does. It really shocks me. Well, it shows you how successful this company is right now oh i was just watching the chat explode when i had the temerity to say that <laughs> yeah they're absolutely on fire this is gonna be a giant wrestlemania and you know and you the know other what? clue last I night guess, hold on well, the other clue last what? night as to what's happening on uh on thursday is uh you know drew still wants that title drew still wants seth's title Sami Zayn still wants seth's title and you know, they're doing a men's elimination chamber in Australia. Now, why do we need a men's elimination chamber if Cody is facing Seth and The Rock is facing Roman Reigns? We well, don't need one unless it's like, oh, we're going to fight for the Intercontinental title. The answer is we need someone to fight for Seth's title because it's not going to be Cody. And Punk got hurt. Punk is injured. So... And look, they have insert Drew has always been a factor in something in some way, even if it was not directly going to be at Mania, it was going to be after Mania when it came to one of those two titles. Now we see Sami Zayn firmly entrenched in that. Could we have a case where Sami steals 
Drew's glory. I think you've talked about that. We still have the wild card of Damian Priest holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. Could he be the guy that screws something up for Drew or screws something up for somebody else along the way? So there are a lot of options that they have there. And again, they're in a good place right now because Punk did get hurt and you have what's going on with Cody and Roman going on over there. You know, you do actually have a good situation here with some intrigue when it comes to Seth's belt. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. In the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. You know, they shot that angle on uh, Friday night, and then uh, over the weekend they sold over 2,000 tickets for Monday's Raw mm. in a weekend, which is a gigantic number. So uh, as angry as people were, they decided they wanted to go to the show and see what's next. And we'll see what happens at the... Uh, T-Mobile on Saturday. How many people buy them lanyards? Mm. A lanyard. When you take the, um, you know, the unfortunate real-world issues out of this and you're just looking at it from a wrestling point of view, I mean, 
Will The Rock show up on Raw now that we're in Mania season? Will, will Roman show up? You never know what's actually, again, this is a time where you actually have a lot of people who are, again, fans just who kind of drift in and out. I mean, this is the time that you galvanize all of their attention, and they've done a great job doing that, even though for those of us who have been watching, we sit here and pull our hair out and go, <laughs> again, Cody has been saying the whole time he was going after Roman. What is happening here? But again, this is, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. They did not need to reimagine the Daniel Bryan situation and the yes movement with Cody Rhodes. They didn't have to do that. Again, the only reason that I would think that they, in their mind, them doing this is because if we get The Rock involved, this will make Cody's, you know, coronation that much bigger. I, I'd i love to, we'll see if that plays itself out, if that's the direction that they decide to go, but I don't know if that's it. This guy says, I hate when people defend bad creative because it does good business. It's possible to do business with good creative. Yeah, it is. But you know what's what's subjective is whether the creative is good or bad. And that the whole at the thing end of the day, the superhero movies? Your, your job in this business is to make money. And what each individual person thinks of any angle or storyline, I mean, hey, listen, you know, there's a lot of people that love it. You don't love it. That doesn't mean it's objectively bad. It means it's subjectively bad. You don't love it, okay? So did I think it was awesome when Cody showed up and said he was stepping away from WrestleMania? I thought it was outlandishly bad. Outlandishly bad. Yeah. Well, turns out a lot of people didn't think it was outlandishly bad. They decided they want to see where it goes next. And that's a job of WWE. If you subjectively don't like it, that's fine. I've never told anybody that you can't dislike whatever. Half of you in the chat hate anything WWE does. Doesn't matter what it is, you'll hate it. That's fine. That That's your opinion. But to sit here and say that, you know, it's it's unsuccessful, it's a failure, it's stupid, you know, you can't. It's It's working out fine right now. To my surprise, I might add, but <laughs> See, well, it yeah, is. Look. Look, we Cody last year at Mania, right before that, Sami Zayn, a little bit before that, just we're recycling all this stuff with Roman. A little bit before that, it was Drew McIntyre. I mean, there have been several times along this journey where, yeah, I would have pulled different triggers here and there. And obviously, people in the the chat have we. There's this is all available for listening and to go back and watch. Where there have been times where we have all thought this is probably too much. They've decided to run with this hand. A lot of people think it's a pad hand, but it's a pad hand that's full of aces, apparently, because it keeps working. At some point, they're going to hit a wall, and they're going to hit it hard. It's just right now, and maybe maybe this is it. Maybe this is the slippery slope that we're going to fall down. They, they're going into Philadelphia with, again, fans that have no problem thinking whatever they want to think and not being controlled by the situation. So we'll see what ultimately happens, but I guess the next step is Thursday, and then I'm sure what happens on Thursday is going to set up something for a live Friday Fox SmackDown, which I'm sure is going to be a big deal as well. Why least- is this so hard for people? LH, again, is wanting good storylines too much to ask. Whether the storyline is good or bad is subjective. Do you understand, LH? It's subjective. Just because you don't like a storyline doesn't mean the storyline is bad. Many people can like the storyline. Clearly, I like NXT a lot more than a lot of people because it's subjective. Clearly, some people like these rankings in AEW a lot more than I do because it's subjective. So there is no good or bad. It's subjective. Do you like it or not? If you don't like it, that's cool. But to say it's objectively bad, it's objectively a bad storyline. What's the last WWE storyline that you thought was good, LH? I want to hear the last storyline in WWE that you thought was good. I'll wait. And I'll say this, too. As somebody that grew up in the 80s on territorial wrestling and preferred... NWA style wrestling to WWF style, even though I watched them both, you know, you go through, we went through this with Dusty Rhodes. We went through this with Barry Windham. We went through it with a lot of people where who is finally going to beat Ric Flair? (laughs) He's going back to this. He hasn't liked a storyline in WWE since the summer of punk. (laughs) 
<laughs> that was, I believe, 14 years ago. Well. Okay. <laughs> 14 years ago. You're telling me that there's not been one good storyline in WWE in 14 years. Okay. Well, uh, you that's, are that's some... called subjectivity. Subjectively, you believe there has not been one good storyline in WWE in uh, in 14 years. I'd like to know. You're what free some to think that, think. but like you're also you also think. better accept that a lot of people are going to violently disagree with you. So, what else? What else does everybody have here? What are, What are some of the other things for people who hate this storyline? Deej, I'm looking at you on this one. You can help out with this. What What is something that has actually made you happy that WWE has done? I can ask Adam Summers this, my co-host of the Big Audio Nightmare. I'll do that on the show tomorrow. It'll probably be something along the lines of the Summer of Punk, though. So, you know, I can actually believe that one for some Oh, this guy liked the Yes movement. Well, yeah, there you go. That was, uh, it was painful as hell to live through. Lenny doesn't want me to go down this road because <laughs> Lenny is not going to come up with anything because it's about uh, 1997. It'll be what the last WWE the, angle. What people forget about the yes movement is for all of us that were in the moment and actually wanting them to do something with Daniel Bryan. What people forget about is the fact that he was hypnotized by the Wyatt family and there were so many things that happened like real there that it, it made it painful. But that's also why at the end of it i think brian danielson when he gets right down to it if anybody has won professional wrestling daniel bryan has brian danielson has kind of sad i'm not going to be here friday it's depressing i don't think i'm going to be here friday the way things are going no someone's got to be here friday brother <laughs> filthy. someone's got to be here friday Filthy can be here Friday. you and filthy can be here and then lenny can go you know what i was wrong i was <laughs> i was absolutely positively certain that brian was wrong <laughs> For the second time, by the way. Second time. I won those quarters. Hey, who said Baron Corbin and the dog food was great? You don't mean that. I don't believe you. Mm. The oddities in the insane class. When I was saying Monday, I'm going to admit he was right. All right, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> what are you right about? It's just going to be Roman and Rock, and there's not going to be any Cody in the situation? Is that what you're saying? I just want to make it clear. <laughs> I just want to make it clear. Oh, my. He's not answering. Okay. What what inning do you think this is? If Paul Heyman were to be asked again, I don't want to talk about Paul Heyman's innings. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> WrestleMania start time is now six thirty Eastern. Hallelujah! No. What do you mean no? Three thirty Pacific. Oh, we don't. Here we go with this crap with your West Coast bias. Ugh. Well, yeah, it could be Rock and Roman one-on-one, -on -one, Lenny. That's why I said at the beginning of the show, you ding-dong. It's going to be Rock and Roman night one and Roman and Cody the night two. Hello? Do I just talk into this mic and no one listens? <laughs> this show is so confusing for people on terrestrial radio. That's Too bad. I mean, it's, it's, very, it's abundantly clear. Roman's wrestling two nights, brother. You're going to see. Is, does he open night one, or does he is he the main event? I will say this. I will say does this. He open night I, one? I like Answer the idea. That. I like the idea that people believe it's absolutely impossible for Roman to work. Like he's got some sort of you know doctor's note. You may not wrestle two nights in a row. Yes, I realize he never he's wrestles. The, he's got the stroke, okay? bro. But he can. He can wrestle two nights in a row. And let me tell that? you something else. Let me tell you something else. If you think My bad hammy. If you think that. Roman Reigns and The Rock is going to be some, you know, <laughs> high endurance. Like, Roman will barely make it through the match and be yes. unable to compete the next day. Please think again, okay? Please think again. The Rock is in his 50s. He hasn't wrestled a long match in 12 years and You're 13 blown years. Up with gender. And in both of those years, he was injured. He was tired walking to the ring. On, and I'm not even talking running. He walked to the ring and he was out of breath. Okay? Obviously, he's going to get in shape. But he's not going to be in the shape where Roman will be so exhausted after his match with The Rock that he will be unable to wrestle the next day. He's going to be fine. If Roman can do an angle on Friday and a match on Saturday, he's going to be fine. Okay? So... And then Roman Reigns can be the first man, even though he will lose his title and possibly lose to The Rock for all we know. He can go on. Because, again, The Rock thing on night one doesn't have to be for the title. It can be for the table. You know what I mean? But he goes and he loses both, but he's still the first man to ever main event both nights of a WrestleMania. 
which is something that they would like to hype later on. I guarantee it. That's how that would work. So anyway, that's uh, that's that. 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern. The idea is they want everyone out of this place as early as possible. Mm-hmm. Probably because the last time they did that New York, New Jersey. Remember when they uh, they did New York, New Jersey, and I was there? The and like lands. everything shuts down at midnight. And so I didn't get back to the hotel till four because there was like you couldn't do anything. It was a disaster. So they're going to make sure that uh, people are out of there early. Back in a moment with Stardom Observer Live. Getting to. Um... I want to go ahead and shift into Continental Classic because you just mentioned it. Uh, a really, really great tournament that AEW has put together with top-notch competitors. I mean, you got to go in there with Andrade, with Brian Danielson. Loved uh, seeing you guys go to the time limit draw. That was awesome. Uh, Daniel Garcia, a young guy in this who's been killing it. Eddie Kingston, Brody King. Uh, all of these people that you got to mix it in with. What was your impression when you first heard of the Continental Classic that, that this was going to be happening? And how did you feel getting to take part in the first one and in the tournament of this caliber? Um, I was very excited, you know. Um, <laughs> right before I uh, joined AEW, uh, I, was, I was extremely close, like <laughs> probably a couple of days away uh, before doing the G1 for New Japan. And I always want to do the G1, and I still own one, I feel like. So um, to do the Continental Classic, um, I was super excited. And it also, to me, um, I feel like I'm at my best when I get into a routine, so to speak. And with the Continental Classic, it's like, you know you wrestle every week. And like then again, like looking back, I was like, I pretty much wrestled every week multiple times. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, but to me, to me, it's always like okay, every cool. And then I looked at the both groups and uh, like all the talent announced, which is awesome because I was like, yeah, yeah. There's like there's not one person that I wouldn't want to be in the ring with. And then um, I saw the the brackets or whatever, and I you know the blue group, and I'm like, this is like, every single competitor is like top level. Every single competitor, it's going to be fun and a big challenge, and every match is going to be different, right? So. Um, I think, I mean, the gold group was fun to watch as well, but I feel like the blue group just had like so many different styles and competitors in it. And it was so much fun, not just for for me, I feel like my, you know, fellow competitors as well and for the, the viewers because you kind of knew what matches you were getting. I mean, like you knew what the matches were like right when you look at it through, like, oh my God, I'm going to get all those matches. But you didn't really know quite when. You know, so it's like it's it's still that like cool, and then it gets announced, and it's cool, and you can look forward to it. Um, and then, of course, it all came down to the last day, which was a lot of fun. I feel like for for everybody watching, and it's not quite over yet. So it's you know, it's, it's been a very good thing uh, for AW and and the fans. And I just brought it down to to me what wrestling is because it's fun, it's sports, it's storytelling, and um, you know, I, you've seen all the guys do like the, the interviews and the promos and then like the matches and it's just everybody put their heart and soul into it and you can tell. Uh-huh. All right. You all right? What next? Following his release from Stardom, Ogawa announced his intention to start a new promotion. Oh, God, this will calm him down. Jeez. Uh, I can't wait, go. yeah. While she is expected to land in WWE shortly, Julia is delaying her start to help Ogawa kick off his new company. They've talked about it on Observer Radio. The reason she's delaying her WWE start is so she can at least be there to kick off the promotion for a while. Get the promotion going, then she's going to end up with WWE at some point. When WWE is interested in her, she basically gave her word she would help Ogawa start out, and that's what she's going to do. She's actually postponing her debut. She has given her word. So uh, that's the latest. He is starting a new promotion. 
And as we talked about yesterday, this Ogawa fella, this Rossi Ogawa, yeah. he's, a, he's a pretty controversial fella because there are a lot of people firmly behind him. And there are also a lot of people firmly not behind him, as we've learned over the last couple of days. A lot of the women are very, very loyal to him. Others are not. People that have worked with him, some are very loyal to him, and others are not. And as we talked about on Sunday, you know, one of the claims, at least from the Rossi Ogawa side, is that many times he has been a scapegoat. And Bushi Road has made certain calls. Bushi Road has made certain requests, and he takes the heat. And that is at least that's at least what his side says about Tony Khan certainly not liking him. Tony Khan, man, this guy had a field day. I yeah, and the thing is, nobody would. I mean, he didn't have to say anything, and nobody would have said or thought anything. And him jumping into this double feet first. Now fires up the speculation station even more. I said it yesterday. There's going to be multiple sides to this story, depending on how you look at all these things. And there's going to be things, depending on your perspective, how you look at things that are going to be okay, right and not right here. Somebody in the forum got upset with me because I brought up Rossi's past. And I didn't say anything negative about him. I have no animus towards the man whatsoever at all. I like stardom. I like the Arceon. But he, this is now the third time that he's left a promotion, and it's been messy. One of the reasons that's the case is because women's wrestling in Japan has been fragmented and messy for a long time now. And I don't know what's going to happen here in the future. I do know he has a lot of women that are going to be going with him, and he's going to be able to start open up a promotion, and he's going to have a leg up. I think on a lot of uh, on stardom and everybody else because he is Rossi Ogawa and he's going to have some stars that come with him. And those people now have as much name value in the West as as any women's wrestler I think ever has. Because as big as All Japan Women was in the, the 80s and all that sort of stuff, that was a newsletter clientele that was hyping him up. Yes, it's not a mass amount of people now in America that know the stardom women, but there's a lot more of those people I think now than there were back in the past. So he's going to have a leg up with whatever he starts. Is it going to be good for the business moving forward? We're going to find out. But remember, too, also, yes, Rossi Ogawa may not have been upset and, and may be upset and he may not have liked what took place with Bushi Road and some of the assurances that he may have gotten that didn't play itself out. But he was also the one that sold the company to Bushi Road. So he, you know, you take what comes with that. And he has not been happy for quite some time. He did the right thing, put in his notice and is leaving now. What's happened with the contracts and, and what is what when it comes to tampering and poaching and all that sort of stuff? Again, it'll probably depend on what your perspective is going to be unless some lawsuits get fire, you know, filed. But this is a, again, it's a very much like a lot of things happening in Japan right now. It's a very interesting time because, again, too, and this will be, we'll talk about more on the, on the uh, Big Audio Nightmare but WWE, he he's not being funded by WWE to start a company. But will he partner with WWE directly or even maybe indirectly? Yeah, that's a that's certainly a possibility moving forward that we're going to have to keep an eye on. So again, it's a it's a fascinating conversation here. But I'm not sure again how much more. We'll have to see how much concrete news comes out about this because I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of he said, she said, and back and forth between camps. Man, I can't wait to see the chat react to this one. But you know what would be great? What's that? If uh, if Rossi started his promotion and, uh, and he worked together with WWE and as a result of this working agreement, some of the uh, new women, his whatever his new group, let's call it Stardom 2 for now, some of the Stardom 2 women came to NXT slash WWE, and they sent some of the NXT women to Stardom. That would yeah. be the best for all of the women involved yeah. to be able hey. to get that experience all over the world. Again, another thing I pointed out yesterday, remember, he, he let women go and work in the May Young, including Viper slash Piper Niven, and again, all the names that we, we talked about yesterday there. So... 
this is something that a lot of people aren't going to want to hear, but it may be the truth because we may have now hit the point where the major companies in Japan, for as much of a, a market as they'll always have because it's their home country, is it going to be like the Nippon Professional Baseball League, where now essentially you're going to only build people up just so Endeavor can take them or just so Tony Khan can take them. And if that's going to be the case, do you want to have a connection a la Paul Heyman and ECW, where at least if you're going to build these people up and you're going to be the funnel for some of them and you're going to get some of these other people in and get them experience um, you know, for you, should you not get something out of that? Should you be getting something with some regular money? I don't think that that would be, from a business point of view, the worst thing in the world, even though a lot of hardcore Japanese wrestling fans can't fathom that thought and don't want it. But the reality of the situation is in the reality of the world is that may be where we're going we had uh smackdown 2.5 million viewers and a 0.74 in 18 to 49 doubled everything on network tv in the key demo the segment with the rock at the end of the show i think did 2.8 million viewers the cody roman rock segment the uh, Rampage show, 314,000 and a .10 for Friday. And the Collision show, 404,000 and a .12 in 18 to 49. So uh, that's numbers from the weekend. That uh, there was a chance that uh, SmackDown was going to be the number one show on all of network television for the week which will be the first time in the history of wrestling. We're talking back when, you know, wrestling was on the Dumont network, but it uh, doesn't look like that's going to be the case. <laughs> a little bit. Apparently there so was when some, you were watching uh, back in the day, huh? Well, that old Fred Kohler wrestling. Bro, Granny watched it. Yeah. That was Granny's first memory of, of wrestling, was watching Gorgeous George in the 50s. Their family had a TV, and people from the neighborhood would come over and watch wrestling on the TV with them. The old lady's choice, young Nicky Bockwinkle. He was an early star of the, the West Coast 50s. Nick Bockwinkle, young Nicky Bockwinkle, the old lady's favorite. All righty. Some notes from Raw. Full Raw report was on uh, on the show yesterday. Why did I write Can I get an update on uh, Brutus's hip? I did not like the way. No more Brutus's Brutus. hip. Hey, Dude. you want to talk about injuries? No more Brutus balls from no, the top rope. Forget that. Floor. That guy's fine. Why don't we talk about that guy that Naya backhanded? Oh, my God, Naya. Guys. Ugh. Oh, my God. Dwayne, stop it. She hit this guy probably easily five times as hard as she hit it's Becky, which made Becky the biggest star in all of WWE for like a U year. UFC level. Why did they give, of all people, why would you give Nia Jax a spinning back fist? She can't, when she, she's hold on, looking hold on. at you, no. she'll potato you. They didn't give her a spinning back fist. She was in a brawl, and she just started swinging. <laughs> and she hits this guy, she just goes, bam! And she and his whole face just goes, Whoa. he was dead. I'm not even sure he's among the living right now. She hit this guy so hard. Bro. He's in concussion protocol. He was an extra. God. <laughs> you know, it's sad. Nia's wrestling. I'm not saying that it was good that she punched Becky, okay? Because it certainly was not, all right? But, hey, you know, you and Becky are in a, a big angle, big match. This guy, you know, the, this this enhancement guy, that's, that's, what he, you know, that's what he used to call these guys, enhancement guys. Because you literally showed up solely to make somebody else look good. Carpenters. And so, you know, it was a very respected job. The wrestlers had great respect for the enhancement talent. They treated them well. You know, they were making the big money, and this guy was coming in for 50 bucks to make them look good so they could no, make even more money. No, they're not fluffers. Enhancement guys. And, like, those are the guys you really got. I mean, you got to take care of everybody. But man, take care of the enhancement. George Stars. South, Mike ja Mike Jackson is still wrestling. You know what, Brian? You want to have your last match? Have it with Mike Jackson. 
Although he might actually gas you out there. He's still walking oh, the ropes stop. at 70-something years I'll old. I'll tell you what's never happened to me. I've never been gassed out in a match ever. But the point is, take care of these people that are making you look good. Don't really? backhand them as hard as you possibly can. That was horrible. We had uh, DIY winning the four-way. There was another four-way on SmackDown. So it's DIY versus Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. And the winners of that will get uh, Judgment Day in Australia. So they did that. They're doing women's Money to Bake qualifiers. Becky beat Shayna in a good match to win that one. And by the way, that, that DIY New Day Imperium Creed's match, that match was awesome. That match was nuts. It was Just, fun. God, that was a Can video game a party though? match. You you hammer the refereeing on sometimes, like Gargano going down and forgetting who was supposed to get the pin. He got one, and then Ciampa pushed him out of the way and got the other two when he came to that. I know. This happened a couple of weeks ago, too. <laughs> God. And then people were like, I think it's a storyline. The referee, you know, because they were doing that thing with uh, Piper, and it wasn't a storyline. It, it was incompetence. And they did the same thing here. What can you do? And we had... Uh, Oh, my God. This is another one. You ever... Nah. Anyway, Tazawa and Maxine lost to Valhalla and Ivar. And, uh, my God, Maxine was absolutely atrocious. And it was just horrible. You can have valet. She doesn't have to wrestle, guys. Where do these people on our board come from? Because they clearly don't listen to the shows. This guy goes, if there had been a match this bad on AEW, we'd have heard about it for weeks. And I was like, there was a match this bad on AEW, and you did hear about it for weeks. It involved gravity. Gravity. He was absolutely <laughs> atrocious in that match. <laughs> he botched more spots than Maxine, although to be fair, there were more spots in that match because it went longer. <laughs> but I talked about that match on multiple shows. I begged people to watch that match. It was an atrocity. And I don't think we've seen gravity since. I think they sent him back to the moon. If that had happened on AEW, oh, go away. Man. We had uh, the 600 day celebration of Imperium, which was uh, we had Jay Uso show up, yeah. and so they're going to probably be wrestling in the Elimination Chamber. If I guess if Gunther can get there, that might be a TV match. I think there might be visa issues for Gunther. That was a rumor, but I don't know for sure. And then uh, Kabuki Warriors beat Caden and Katana. They still stink, dude. Kyrie missed a spot in this match. Oh, would you? And you're going to yell at Kane and Katana? You know they were all Although that, Kyrie yeah. misses a spot in every single match she's in. She's the best worker on earth that misses a spot in every single match she's in. And Cody beat Nakamura. Back in a moment, Observer Live. One, two. Now he's got Brian Alvarez. He whips him into the corner hard. Adam Firestorm following up, catches a boot to the face. Brian, Al- Brian Alvarez with another hard shot to the head. One, two. This is the most aggressive I've seen Brian Alvarez today here in Portland Wrestling. Now he's got his knee across the throat. He's joking him, LC. Well, it's like this week Alvarez has something to prove, brother. Something to prove to his sweet little lady over there. Of course, Adam Firestone with a big win over Black Dragon last week. Looking for another one here. There's a sunset flip. Is he going to go down? Yes, he is. Over he goes. One, two, three. It is all over. Adam Firestone with the victory over beautiful Brian Alvarez here in Portland Wrestling. Now out Brian Alvarez firing away with a boot. Action continues after the bell. Goes for the back body drop. No! Face first plant by Adam Firestone. Your winner once, looks like he'll be your winner twice. Action continues. There's a whip into the far corner. Adam Firestorm follows with a spinning kick. LC, I think Brian Alvarez has bit off more than he could chew tonight. Miss to own really disgusted over in the corner. Adam Firestorm not done. There's a lion sold on top. He hooks him again, one, two. Two and a half. I thought we had a three count earlier in this match, LC. I was wrong, I'm sorry. I can't sorry. believe it. I thought Youth Gone Wild was just adding a little salt to the wound. I thought Alvarez was out of her head and a two-time loser, brother. Well, Mark Watson's hand must have stopped just short of the three count. And these eyes of mine need glasses because I thought I saw a three count Brian Alvarez going up top. Oh, we'll forget about your cataracts, brother. Up and over he goes. Nobody home. 
Adam Firestorm back in control, playing a bit of possum. He's climbing up top as Rento and Otto really upset. There he goes. Oh, oh, oh. That one yet. There's a hook leg. One, two, three. Now it's all over. A two-time loser. And does the LC have to look after Miss Rento and Otto tonight, baby? There's Adam Firestorm, your winner in this match. Once, twice, three times, it didn't matter. Brian Alvarez not up to it. Miss Rinto Onato absolutely disgusted with it. Mark Watson explaining to him it was a three count this time. No hook the leg. Fair and square, Adam Firestorm, your winner here on Portland Wrestling. Fans will be right back with a, after a message from our sponsors. Well, tonight we got NXT. Carmelo Hayes will explain his actions. Why did he attack Trick after that match on Sunday? We'll find out tonight. Roxanne Perez faces Lola Vice. Lexis King faces Riley Osborne, who has asked young Thea to be his Valentine. When's Valentine's Day? 14th. Okay, so we got... Uh, oh, my God, it's next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You bet. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, no, the day. Remember mentioned I love this show. Yeah. No, it'll be next week, right? No, thirteenth. It's the fourteenth. Let me see here. Well, they can go on a they can go on a date on the thirteenth uh, Wednesday. I didn't ask you, Dom. Don't correct me. Yeah, he's right. So uh, I can still go on a. Uh, they can go on a date on my mother's birthday, which is the day before Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. So then we've got uh, Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus Edris and Ofe and Malik Blade. And Braun and Baron celebrate their Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic win. Is Nathan Fraser a full-blown heel yet? I love it. I want to see him in action. He's a full-blown gimmick is what he is. I love it. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> then tomorrow, Tony Khan has a big announcement. Swerve versus Hangman for the AW title shot. Big Bill and Ricky Starks against Sting and Darby for the tag titles. Jericho versus Kinez uh, Takeshita. Kanoski Takeshita. Moxie Danielson and Claudio versus Mystico, Volador, and Hechicero. And Tony Storm in the unranked Red Velvet as she attempts to get a championship match. Deanna Parazzo, who is the number one contender, will be number one on commentary. And we are out of time, everybody! We'll be back tomorrow. I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about, won't we? As we always do. Back tonight with Vinny, Brian and Vinny and Craig show. Chamber of Horrors. We're going to watch the Chamber of Horrors and Ron Simmons win the world title. Lots of stuff coming up tonight. Back in a moment, meaning tomorrow, Wrestling Observer Live.